Okay, good morning. Yesterday we were uh, discussing on the uh, anti roll bars and also uh, we have gone through the rubber spring bumps. So, actually, there are four types of springs, right? First is the coil spring, then uh, leaf spring, next torsion bar, and at last. Uh, the rubber spring so these four kind of uh, springs are utilized in the automobile uh, this provides a spring action spring action for the suspension for any type of suspension this uh, any one of these type of spring is utilized and for uh, a particular spring uh, say the rubber spring we have three convolutes single convolute double convolute and triple convolute and the uh, typical characteristic curve is shown here. So from the curve itself, we can say that for a single curve, it is more linear or not uh, linear, but uh, <clears throat> it is having uh, low rate, low stiffness, uh, sorry, uh, spring rate. That means with least uh, force, it's, uh, sorry, uh, high spring rate for the single convolute and comparatively uh, lower rate for double and triple because the uh, <coughs> spring rate itself is what is the spring rate it is the rate at which or the uh, vertical load needed for unit deformation or unit deflection for particular deflection ethertholam than vertical load vanu adana spring rate appo adin anusarichu oru characteristic curve nammal padichirunnu then we have seen that for the the curve may vary for the uh, what you call uh, loading and unloading for loading it goes like this loading means uh, then it moves over a bump the curve will go like this that means by deflection uh, using the vertical load a particular deflection for say for 100 kilogram this much, this much will be the deflection and uh, like that it will go up to here then after rebounding it will uh, transverse the this path this particular path and <clears throat> So this is the area uh, enclosed by uh, these two curves gives the energy. Okay, energy stored in the spring, and uh, this is the hysteresis curve for single convolute uh, spring. As for the double convolute spring, it is like this. Here we can see the, the rate is smaller than the single uh, convolute spring, and likewise for triple also. So till uh, this we are discussing, next we move to rare suspension. So what do you mean by rare suspension? Rare suspension means the suspension system we can see in the uh, rare part of the vehicle or uh, bottom, uh, sorry, uh, back portion of the automobile. There. Uh, Maybe uh, for our vehicles, commercial vehicles, usually the rear wheels are dead wheels or dead axles are used. That means the main drive is given to the front wheels. Usually the main wheel uh, drive is given to the front wheel for the uh, usual vehicles uh, like our cars and all. But for heavy trucks, uh, or sometimes maybe for the jeeps both the uh, 
rear and front drive are used that you can see <coughs> so anyway uh, here we are dealing with the rear part or the uh, back portion the suspension seen in the rear portion there are mainly two types so one it is a live axle live axle means what is a live axle that means it will be always in live live position that means uh, we are giving the drive to the that particular axle so we call it as a live axle then next is non drive uh, suspension there it is uh, there uh, the the drive is not given so you can uh, see one by one first is the live axle rear suspension here these are the things wheel camber wheel camber is zero if the vehicle is stationary or moving in the road so in case of live axle rear suspension the wheel camber camber means the angle that is uh, the wheel uh, the angle between the vertical and the wheel if uh, So if the wheel is like this, and this is the axis of the wheel, and if the vertical, then this particular angle is termed as the camber angle, and we say that uh, the camber is positive. How we can say uh, whether the camber is positive or negative? This is with respect to the body. That means if the body is here, body, and this is the left part. So compared to the body, the upper part of the wheel is moving beyond, beyond the body or away from the body. So it may be termed as positive. On the other wise, it will be negative. So. Here in this case, the wheel camber is zero. That means it will be perpendicular. If the vehicle is stationary, if it is stationary or moving in the road, straight road, then uh, it will be zero. If one wheel travels over the dip in the road, then the axle will dip. That means if the wheel goes into a dip, what happens is it will be tilting. The uh, axle used is here. And the axle will tilt. The wheel track remains constant under all driving conditions. So, in all driving conditions, in any driving condition, the wheel track. Wheel track means you can see. Uh, suppose this is a car. Car. Okay. Sorry. Car. And this is the. wheel back wheel front wheel consider this as a car okay this is the front portion and this is the rear portion so the distance between this wheel this is termed as the track or track width so throughout the driving condition any driving condition under all driving condition this uh, wheel track remains constant so in live axle the unsprung weight is very high so in this case the unsprung weight what is the unsprung weight unsprung weight means uh, the weight of the uh, vehicle without considering the uh, body that means first of all uh, if we buy a uh, bus or lorry etc you can see it will be like this front portion will be like this and the back portion only some chassis will be there right the upper part will not be there so uh, remaining portion this much portion it is termed as the unsprung weight so in live axle the unsprung weight is very high so in this case this unsprung weight is very high the live 
rigid axle is attached to the body by either leaf or coil springs so the springs utilized here is the leaf spring or coil springs and the body will tilt about the imaginary load roll center so here uh, also the rolling takes place about the imaginary roll center so these are all about the uh, live axle rear suspension so we know the rear suspension what is the rear suspension rear suspension is the suspension that we can see in uh, the rear part of a vehicle and in that first we were discussing about the live axle rear suspension where we are giving the drive drive to the uh, axle rear axle now we move, uh, we may move to the next part that is a non drive rear suspension this is also known as dead axle dead axle that means it is dead or we are not giving any drive so the non drive rear axle is also called as dead axle and it does not have the drawback of large unsprung weight that means for the previous case it is men uh, mentioned that uh, it, it is having huge unsprung weight so that there are certain difficulties in the comfort uh, uh, regarding the comfort etc this may move or it will roll about the uh, roll axis or the roll center so that may create some discomfort to the driver or the passengers so in this case for the non drive suspension uh, this particular disadvantage is overcome by uh, because uh, it is not having that much large unsprung weight and here it maintains both the wheels parallel all time for the whole time the wheels will be parallel that means uh, uh, during the steering or uh, during that third module i think it is third or second third third module we have discussed two terms tow in and tow out what was that tow in and tow out that the wheels are like this and if it is uh, pointing towards the front then it will be towing and it will be if it is diverging that means tow out if it is like that so in this case it will always will be parallel so it maintains both the wheels parallel all the time parallel all the times this suspension linkage is used to provide a vertical up and down motion of the axle relative to the body that means here a vertical up and down motion of the axle relative to the body will be there suspension using the suspension linkage and it also prevents longitudinal and lateral axial misalignment due to the braking thrust cross winds or side centrifugal side force so due to centrifugal side force or braking thrust when we are braking what happens is uh, this front portion will dip may dip or cross winds uh, using the side force it may go to the side this type of things may happen but what we uh, we can see is in luxury vehicles if we keep a cup of tea that it will not uh, move so like that uh, we were uh, seeing some videos or etc so in that case also what happens is it is using maximum suspension system to prevent the rolling and uh, this much uh, longitudinal lateral misalignment etc so these type of things may happen in this case also <laughs> now uh, so we are have discussed or uh, told about the two kinds of suspensions in the rear part first is was the live axle and next it was the non drive rear suspension now we will see different types of suspensions one among these two and will have many components or 
uh, a combination of uh, some suspension systems uh, etc we have gone through the, uh, many suspension systems like a person short swing long swing transverse parallel etc so that types that types of suspension plus uh, whether it is dive or dead axle so a combination of these all will constitute some certain types of suspension for that the figure is very important so we have to learn the figure so you will score my uh, good marks for the uh, particular question if you are aware about the figure so you have to draw and learn that's the only thing so <clears throat> first one swing arm rear wheel drive swing arm rear wheel drive suspension this is the figure so now onwards uh, for the different types of uh, suspensions you will have two views one is a plan view or the top view top view it will be looking uh, it will be looking like this from the top and the rear view from the back side but you can see it will be like this this is the uh, front view sorry top view and rear view of the uh, swing arm rear wheel drive independent suspension that means swing arm swing arm means there are, there are two swinging arms this is the one of the swinging arm this is next one it is pivoted here and we are using the independent suspension independent suspension what do you mean by independent suspension independent suspension means the suspension of one of the wheel is purely not dependent or independent of other that means you can have the suspension for or movement of this wheel alone or you can have the motion for this one alone both are not moving simultaneously but you can have a independent suspension for this so this is the swing arm rear wheel drive independent suspension so in this uh, suspension system a pair of triangular transverse swing arm member is situated in the either side of the uh, this one body or the final drive and you can see here the coil springs located vertically on the top of this top of this uh, swing arm near the outer end now the wheels are supported on drive hubs two hubs are there here the wheels are supported these wheels are supported here and each drive shaft has only one universal joint mounted in the inboard with its center aligned with that of the uh, pivot axis so it is uh, joined by only one universal joint next when the body rolls during the cornering what do you mean by cornering cornering means we have already uh, discussed that that means uh, while you are taking a sharp turn what happens is due to the centrifugal force which is acting on the uh, center of gravity of a of the vertical body there may be a chance to roll roll towards other end so this is uh, that was the cornering so when the body rolls during cornering the inner and outer wheels relative to turn become cambered negatively and positively that means uh, this is the vehicle suppose this is a vehicle and it is the body body of the vehicle these are two wheels left and the right suppose uh,
suppose the body is taking a turn like this turning like this then what happens is the body will have a due to the inertia the body will have a centrifugal force in this direction right so the body may tilt in this direction right ingena oru vandi move iyanengil swabhavikamayittu left leg move iyanengil then on the right leg ingena cheyyanulla oru possibility undu nammal vandi seekum pariya alle so in that time time what happens is it is rotating in this fashion so the this wheel may tilt in this direction and this will be in this direction okay that means it is circling or uh, moving in this direction that means this is the inner wheel inner wheel and this is the outer wheel and we can see here this is the vertical and this is negative camera angle and here it is away from the body so it is positive camera angle so at this portion we can say that when the body is uh, cornering or body rolls during cornering the inner wheel uh, becomes cambered negative and the outer big wheels will become uh, or uh, will be cambered positive <clears throat> now both the wheels will remain parallel all the times and there is no change in the toe or toe here also there will be uh, no change in the uh, toe or toe in or toe and it will be always in parallel this is the swing arm rear wheel drive independent suspension now next is the low pivot split axle coil uh, spring rear wheel drive independent suspension perakka nalla adichu poli perul aanu appo perakka nu padichu vekka peru mathramalla ande figure so you have to draw the figure adu mathramana oru narayam padicha figure ullana ella ullathu appo adu oru thavana engilu oru thavana padichu padikka okay okay so actually for the swing arm for a typical or uh, conventional swing arm type of suspension there are certain disadvantages or limitations mainly three limitations are pointed out first one the spring uh, sorry the swing arm were relatively short because the pivot has to be mounted on the either side of the final drive uh, final drive housing that means actually the swing arms here we are using the short uh, swing arm or the swing arms are connected to the end of the body or the end of the uh, or it is pivoted in the end of the final drive housing so the uh, length of the two uh, swing arms are relatively short so at that time also we were uh, we have learned that for the short arm swing uh, suspension the camber change will be much higher or the angle is much higher so that means the driving comfort may reduce uh, while crossing a, any hump or while rolling the rolling effect will be more so that was the first disadvantage then the body roll center of this suspension is high that is the roll center is uh, at a height much uh, more more or the height is high then uh, in case of cornering it is uh, the swing arms are jacked up with a load concentrated on the outside highly positive camber wheel loses its ability to hold on the road 
so while cornering what happens is we have said that uh, if the rolling action is much higher it may have a chance to roll or for the uh, huge vehicles it may uh, tilt or lose the control of the uh, driver and it may cause some accidents or discomfort to the uh, passenger or uh, even so these are the main disadvantages and for overcoming this short uh, shortcomings or uh, disadvantages uh, relatively large change in the wheel camber and very high roll center etc we are using this type of this kind of low pivot split taxi uh, coil spring and here with this modified arrangement this axle is split into two this axle is split into two and uh, with the adjacent half axles hinged on a common pivot point which is uh, the adjacent axles are pivoted on the common point which is hinged on a common pivot axis common pivot axis uh, below the final drive housing a vertical strut supports the final drive assembly a vertical strut vertical strut will be used for the final assembly at the upper end it is mounted on the rubber disc and its lower end it is anchored to the pin joint situated on the hinged side of the final drive housing so in the upper end this will be mounted on rubber discs and for the lower end in the lower end it will be anchored uh, anchored to the pin joint situated on the hinged side of the final drive housing now for the left hand side left hand portion what you can see is the drive shaft then uh, crown wheel and differential unit these three things will be in the left side left, left side of this axle what all things drive shaft drive shaft then crown wheel crown wheel and differential unit differential differential unit okay now <clears throat> a single universal joint is located inside the casing so that it aligns with the axle pivot axis so here a single universal joint universal joint you can see uh, what is a universal joint can be uh, swelled at any angle or using this joint you can uh, transfer the uh, rotation or whatever may be in any particular axis the right hand axle right hand half axle consists of drive shaft and a rubber boot so in the left portion these all things were be there were present that is a drive shaft uh, crown wheel and differential unit in uh, now for the left uh, sorry uh, now for the right hand side we can see a drive shaft the drive shaft is connected to the right uh, right side portion drive shaft then crown uh, sorry uh, rubber boot these two things are available on the right portion now a horizontal arm forms a link between the pivot axis and the body structure and it may control the lateral movement of the body related to the axis so the horizontal arm which is uh, uh, which is formed as a link between the pivot axis pivot axis and uh, the body structure it may control the lateral movement the uh, which are movements in the lateral direction with respect to the axles and the body roll center becomes pivot axis for the two half axles and these are all the things uh, mentioned in the low pivot split axle coil uh, rear wheel drive independent suspension okay 
next is trailing arm uh, rear wheel drive that we uh, will discuss on the next class so we are having the next class in the uh, fourth period so rahul sir is only so he will be taking the class okay ni attendance on that come Thank <laughs> you.